Good evening. It's Tuesday. Happy Burns Day to you all. It's Tuesday night. Uh, two North East wounds this evening. Call Byers to my night. Call on how are we? Not bad. I thought you was going to start us off with a, a wee poem just to kick things off. Maybe later on. <laughs> anyway, uh, good evening to you all. Hope you're all well. Uh, but a sad day called uh, when Janssen passed away. The man that stopped 10 villagers. Yeah, it, uh, it doesn't seem that long ago since uh, I was here uh, speaking about the, the, the passing of uh, Walter Smith. Another uh, legend is, is gone, uh, Boom Janssen, obviously. Um, uh, played a, a small part, I would say, in Celtic's history, but he's probably played one of the, the big largest uh, chapters of their, of their history by, as you said, their, uh, stopping that uh, mm -hmm. uh, 10 in a row, which was uh, obviously... Uh, the the biggest uh, the biggest thing that the Celtic fans would have wanted at, at that time. It was probably the most important league title that Celtic could ever won. Yeah, and and given uh, given how the, the last previous nine years had gone, um, Rangers had really won the, the leagues uh, fairly comfortably, and and it didn't look like anybody was going to get anywhere near them. And Celtic, even as a club, but were, were struggling um, for for large parts and. And uh, when he came in, he really had a, a, the, the probably the, the biggest job that anybody could have uh, uh, wanted uh, or had asked for at that time, uh, because the pressure on him uh, to, to deliver that title would have been phenomenal. Um, that was the one thing that Celtic fans would have wanted was to to, to get that title um, in '98 and uh, and stop that uh, ten in a row, which. You know, it's still even talked about today. Just how important that is for uh, for Celtic's uh, recent history. Now, when you look at it, you did your own impossible job when you walked into the job at Celtic Park. I mean, you just saw the Van Van Hoynick. He was in the process of losing the Canio and Cadet. They just had spent a lot of money, fifteen point five to be precise, on their squad in the aim of obviously making it ten. Yeah. It was a near on impossible job, but he, he got he got the job done. Yeah, it was um, the uh, the three amigos as, as they were called, Van Hoy, Dunk, Cadet, and uh, De Canio had uh, had all left, and uh, I think Paul McStay had left as well, the the, the captain at the time. Um, so there was a big rebuilding job for him to, for him to do, um, and as you said, Rangers had, had thrown money at it, and this was the days under David Murray where they they were spending money and. We you say fifty million. That doesn't sound like a lot, but nowadays. But back then, fifty million was a lot. I think, um, if I remember correctly, that was uh, spending uh, on the levels of uh, your top sides in, down in England, if not uh, uh, better than some of the top sides down in England. So they're certainly throwing the, the, the money at it to make sure that they got the ten. And as you said, it was a tough job. It was a tough ask for him to come in, um, but he got the job done. Which I, and I think as well. Um, Mordor McLeod, but it played a, a large part in that as well because he brought him in as, as his assistant, which I think was right. key. Um, just to have that uh, Celtic um, background, somebody who was obviously been a Celtic man and uh, who knows the club well, obviously, uh, Vim probably didn't know too much about the culture and, and uh, the as that, that aspect of it. So bringing Mordor was, was obviously a key thing, but yeah, he uh, he certainly got the job done, and, and obviously, the, the bringing in Henrik Larson. Uh, in itself was was a uh, was a bit of a coup. Uh, obviously, the the things that he went on to do uh, after uh, that season, I think it changed Celtic's future in a way because after that they had a, a pretty good run under Martin O'Neill when he eventually took over. Yeah, I, I think um, if you look at back, at, you know, um, Liam Brady and Lou McCarry, Celtic uh, guys, Celtic men who who tried to win. Uh, titles for Celtic uh, had had failed. Tommy Barnes obviously had come in and uh, had got them close, but just wasn't close enough. And uh, whoever it was that was going to come in and replace Tommy would have uh, had the the, the biggest uh, pressure. The, their only their only job would have been that season was to was to win the title. And, and yeah, you're right. They they, they did win it. Um, unfortunately, obviously he was only there for one season. Um, you know the the story of, of him and, uh, and Jock Brown still this sort of lingers on with a lot of Celtic fans and it's still hold me back grudge uh, against Jock because of that. Um, and then there was the, the kind of barren spell of uh, Doctor Joe Vengloss year, and then then they had a, the year under um, John Barnes and uh, Kenny Dalglish. So yeah, it, it, things didn't go well after that. But yeah, as you said, once Martin O'Neill mm -hmm. came in, then there was that run of of uh, titles again. But yeah, he's. Uh, his legacy is obviously 
uh, still lo- lives large and uh, no doubt will uh, will be honoured uh, appropriately. It's funny as well because if you we're going to pinpoint the goalie here, Jonathan Gold, he was third choice goalie at Bradford with the Celtic number one brilliant season. Yeah, I, I think that was that was uh, what what, what uh, Vim had done. He, he could get the best out of players. I mean, he. He certainly got the best out of Craig Burley and Paul Lambert that season. Those two were phenomenal in the in Celtic midfield uh, and had a, a, a big uh, hand in uh, how that uh, title was won. Uh, you know, bringing in somebody like Henrik Larson for, you know, next to nothing as it is nowadays uh, and, and getting the best out of him. But, you know, th- these these players always seem to just want to work uh, and, and work hard for him. And he got the best out of them, and, and, and you know, you know, gold being third choice, we obviously then went on to uh, be a Scotland international uh, after that as well. So yeah, he, he certainly knew he knew how to to get the best out of players, and the uh, gold was certainly one. Uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you when you look at it, Colin, right? We, Scottish football, you know yourself. We don't spend a lot of money nowadays. But funnily enough, uh, Blackback, Jonathan Blackback, uh, Jonathan Blackback. Was signed for two million from Rosenberg to bolster Silk Strike Force. Um, with the exception of a few, Silk don't really spend that amount of money. Neither club in Scottish football may have, sorry, never spend that amount of money nowadays. No, I, th- I think that um, the, it's changed days, obviously, in, in that time. I think uh, money was uh, much uh, more readily available and, and, and seemed to come uh, pretty easy. But, uh, you know, Harold Blackback, I think. Um, he came in and, uh, as you said, was the one who tried to, you know, um, add that extra uh, firepower. D- didn't he? Didn't fire an all cylinder, so he was quite uh, lambasted for some of his performances. But the irony was, of course, he was the he's the one who scored the second against St Johnston to to wrap up the title along with uh, Henrik scoring the, the opener. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when, when you look at this title race, a fantastic season, and the point conclusion, Celtic got the job done. But for for Rangers, utter utter travesty. Yeah, we shouldn't have, we shouldn't forget about the uh, Hearts as part in, the, in that uh, season as oh, well. Man. They got off to a phenomenal start. They just sort of fell away at, at the in this sort of second half. Too many draws for them. I think it was in the end. I think they ended up drawing maybe ten games uh, in the in the season. Whereas uh, you know Celtic and Rangers just kept plugging away and and eventually caught up with them. In fact, I think Hearts were leading at one point, but. Yeah, it was uh, it was certainly a, um, it was an enjoyable season if you were a neutral uh, watching it. Um, and it was uh, it was good. It went to the the, the last day. Um, I think there were still there were two points only. Maybe just needed a draw, but you know got the job done with the uh, with the victory against uh, St Johnston at home. It's funny because I was speaking to John Robertson about that uh, when I interviewed him for the book, and he was pinpointing the fact that he was disappointed that he didn't win the league title. Yeah, they they had gotten off to a really really good start, um, and it just seemed to be after uh, Christmas period they just sort of fell away in terms of pick, uh, no uh, dropping points here and there. As I said, they didn't play badly; they just were drawing too many games. Um, of course, that was the same season that uh, that Hibs got relegated. So, you know, this maybe for a Hearts fan, you may well, yeah, okay, uh, Hibs got relegated, but. There would have been the, the double whammy of uh, Hibs getting relegated and then winning the, the the league title as well, which would have been icing on the cake. But um, no, it was a, it was a really good season. Um, a lot of uh, new faces obviously came into uh, Scottish football at the time, and uh, it was good to see um, a, 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 almost a three horse race um, all the way to the end. And I, I think we've really had uh, that since. A lot of good tributes today. So coming out, Ange Postecoglou coming out, Rangers coming out. Craig Barley's came out, a host of other players have come out. Uh, some good tributes in there. Uh, I've been busy with my work today, so I've not had an opportunity to read every single one of them. I haven't had a wee whoop before we started. Some good tributes in there. Yeah, you would expect that. Um, the man who uh, was obviously, as I said, stopped uh, the 10 in a row uh, will get all the all the, uh, the plaudits and uh, it rightly deserves them. Uh, you just wonder uh, what he might have uh, achieved had he you know, remained there for, for a longer. Uh, as I said, he'd, he'd fallen out with uh, Jock Brown and, and left two days after the after winning the title. But uh, I know that the following season, Rangers again threw money at it, as says David Murray uh, liked to do. Um, 
uh, under the, the new manager, um, Dick Ivercut, I think it was, he, he came in and just sort of threw the money. So whether or not he would have been able to hold on to the championship, but I certainly think it... Uh, it wouldn't have been as comfortable for Rangers uh, the the following two or three seasons, but uh, yeah, I think um, the tributes have come in, have, have been heartfelt, and uh, it's good to see so many. Uh, much like uh, when when Walter sadly passed, that uh, it was coming from uh, all uh, corners of the Scottish game, and um, and I, I think everybody recognises that the, the job that uh, Vim had done uh, and the the integrity he went about his job uh, with it as well. Right, on to the other side of Glasgow now, off to Rangers. Uh, Disappointing, frustrating news from a Rangers persuasion today, Colin, with Yanis Hadji rolling out for the rest of the season. And after the events that we see with Torgy last uh, Tuesday night, I'm actually surprised that Rangers haven't completed the SFA, but still that means, uh causing this. Yeah, um, <laughs> there's... Uh, oh, no, it's trying to be a bit... I, 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 it's not, I think uh, having seen the game watched the game I, I don't think they could have a, too many complaints with the with the referee uh, on the day um, yeah. yes th- there was maybe one or two things that he, he let slide however um you know to, to then go and, and uh, almost you know clipe to to the bosses and say right we didn't think he was he was that good it, it almost then singles him out um, um in future games which really as a referee, you'd rather sort of fly under the radar. I know a lot of referees get their reputation of it's all about them and it's all about, you know, how can they stand out kind of thing. But um, he's certainly one that uh, a lot of people will be going, oh, well, well, we'll keep an eye on him next. Where's your referee in next? Who's he, uh, wh- when's he going to be um, refereeing a, a Rangers game next? That sort of thing. So, I you know, it, it doesn't bode well. Um and, you know, if they're going to do that with him, does that mean they say they're going to do it with uh, any other referees as well? That, you know, they've set a precedent. If they don't like the referee in the next one, are they going to uh, be a nine-point uh, report next or a 10-point report or 12? You know, where does it end? Uh, I think they should... I think that it was a game that they're probably a point which would maybe a fair result for, for both. Um, I, I don't think the Rangers really... Um, did enough to, to warrant winning the game. Um, I don't think everybody really warranted winning the game either. So I think it was probably justified. But you know, going complain to the the referee, uh, the SFA, but the referee is a bit was a bit uh, petulant in my eyes. Ah, right, yeah. On Hadji, uh, disappointing news for Rangers, considering they have a they have a title challenge coming up. Celtic will be back with a vengeance. Obviously, there's a lot of big players could be rolled out soon for Rangers. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's, it's, it's uh, injuries is, is for anybody is is, uh, is not good, but particularly at this time of the year when uh, you know games are going to come in thick and fast after the um, after the shutdown or the, the winter break, if you like. And he's obviously become a, a large part of uh, the Rangers team and, and and heavily involved with a lot of their good uh, things going forward, um, and will obviously be missed. Uh, does this now? Just uh, Van Bronckhorst with what a week left, or just under a week left of the the transfer window. Look at it and go. Well, uh, I need somebody else to come in, um, and I need extra players. Or will he go with what he's got? I don't know. Um, it's probably more likely that if it's as lengthy as what we think it is, the rest of the season, he might just delve into the the, the market and bring somebody else in. Yeah. On uh, on this this point of uh, view, I mean Rangers. Well, they take the good strength, but uh, do they have the funds? Probably. Do they want to go to strength? I think they do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a there's an aspect of it of Celtic have obviously strengthened. They've brought in uh, three or four bodies already in, in in the window. Rangers will be looking at it and go, well, we probably need to strengthen as well, just to, to make sure that we, you know. Get, keep going uh, and and fight for that uh, title again. Um, I, whether or not you know, it's always difficult to bring in players in January. I think it's always the, the hardest window to bring people in uh, because if somebody's if somebody is playing well for for a team, it, the, the team is less likely to to let them go unless it's for a a, a decent fee. Um, and anybody out there who isn't played probably isn't under in the Rangers radar. So. Um, yeah, it would be it be difficult, but uh, I think they will. Um, you know, with a, a week or so to go. 
Yep, yeah, absolutely. Right, away from Rangers, we are going to go to... Well, we're going to look at the Scottish Cup. Just very briefly, of course, because the guys of Glenn Schooner and Stuart Garvey obviously touched on it last night. First and foremost, good win for Peter Head at the weekend. Struggled, but got the job done. Simon uh, Fenner got a fair, be- fair bit of abuse, I noticed, on social media as well. Yeah, yeah there was uh, the one particular guy who had... Uh, um, come up from uh, East Coast Boyd and uh, had a uh, couple of Shandies uh, to me, I think, and uh, uh, was was given uh, Simon a better stick. And uh, uh, Simon, uh, strangely, had, 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 had taken the bait and uh, sort of bait the black, which is uh, slightly unusual. I think he, he's normally um, quite calm and, and serene when it comes to that kind of things, but I think there was a, a slight bit of uh, uh, frustration on his part. And he did admit after the game that he, he shouldn't have, uh, he shouldn't have uh, bit into the the criticism, but uh, you know, if he's going to do that uh, once a season, you, you can let him off. But uh, no, it was a it was a good result in the end. Um, I, I think East Kilbride probably did deserve to to draw the game over in the ninety minutes. I think they they done enough. Um, it was uh, it was a good game, a good game to watch, um, and I, I think it just shows you just how uh, how competitive and how good these uh, teams are in the Lowland leagues and the Highland leagues, as as you know. Uh, and just how uh, much the gap, I think, is it, sl- etching closer and closer between those teams and sort of League Two and League One side. So, uh, and it's a good advert for the for the uh, for the pyramid as well, just to see the, the quality coming through. But a lot of bugs have experienced that uh, East Kilbride side. You know, with Jamie Stevenson being there, Chris uh, Miller was there as well. Um, but Joe Victoria was was just phenomenal, scoring two goals. And had he not gone off injured uh, with ten minutes to go, might have uh, just edged it uh, towards uh, Kilbride. But in the end, it was. Uh, we're through, and and that's uh, that's all you need to. Uh, that's all. So that's all. It's important, I should say, uh, in a in the cup. Um, just getting through and getting your uh, name in the hat. I'm only going to go to the transfer window, but <laughs> having seen Dundee for my own eyes on Saturday, I think you've got a chance. Yeah, we were, we were talking about it yesterday. It's it's uh, you know Dundee are you know really struggling at the minute. Um, I think the the cup. The cup game was uh, was their only uh, win in, in the last seven or eight or something like that, um, and I know you know things can change within two or three weeks, so you never know what's going to happen. But at home, you know, we'll certainly fancy our chances, um, and you just never know. You know, Dundee might just see it as uh, it's a game that they might not want to play because you know survival in, in the Premier League is, is probably their priority. And with the amount of games that they've got coming up, you know, playing say Saturday midweek, Saturday midweek, um, you know, they might be resting players prior, they might be resting players before uh, the cup game, etc. So we're interested to see, but you know, if we can, uh, if we can get uh, get through that one, you know, it's just into the the, the quarterfinals, and you, you just never know what happens after that. Because the the thing was, Scott, is Saturday that Saturday that game, I thought the battle were compact. Uh, Dundee had a few chances, but. Sam Robsbott was really worked. Second half, Dundee brought McMullen, uh, Griffiths, Griffiths came on, yes, and uh, Charlie Adam came on. The, the game kind of changed. Max Anderson got a bit of impetus about him. And that was the only difference in the game. Uh, the battle had a few, few chances themselves. And Robsbott only had to be worked once in that game in, in the second half on Saturday, which just goes to show you how resolute the battle were. Yeah, and, and the battle are, are, are a side that. Um... Uh, are struggling a little bit in League One, and, and Dundee obviously struggled in, in the Premier League. So it maybe wasn't the the most prettiest of games either uh, to watch either. But I think the, the sending off was obviously telling uh, in the, in the long run as well. Um, you know, we could argue whether it's a, a sending off or not. I don't, it was. Back, right? uh, I don't think it was a sending off. I think it was yeah. it was just a, a flare and arm, and uh, I think um, I think we said Kami Kerr it went down. I think he's just yeah. uh, played for it slightly, but uh, no, I think if uh, had it been eleven against eleven, it might have been a different story. But no, I think the uh, Barton have, have done themselves uh, done themselves proud with that one. Yeah, absolutely. Right, continuing the Scottish Cup, uh, Mohammed Niang of Awa has been hit with an SFA notice. A good point. Now, if we're in twenty twenty two, Colin, we're, we're both old school characters and have some mentality towards the game. In terms of philosophy as well, uh, I, I should say, but 1990s, fine. 2022, yeah. you're going. Yeah, I, I, I think it's. Uh, I, I, I don't. I, I don't really see anything wrong with those kind of challenges. Um, I know why people would would disagree, uh, but I think that's how the game is is at the moment. That's where it's gone. So um, under. 
under the way that the game is, I think he's, he's probably uh, probably uh, well, he has been hit with a, a, a notice of complaint um, and probably will be be given a, a retrospective uh, red for it. But um, I, I would say if you you're, you the danger is that we're going to start then looking at every uh, tackle in uh, in slow motion. You know, if that had been a game that wasn't on TV, would it have been you know the, the same? Um, but it got in the same uh, um, attention, probably not. Um, but I, I would, I would say he's, you know, it's probably justifiable that, that it probably was a, a, as a red. As I said, I, I don't agree with it, but um, that's just how the game is at the moment. It's the same guy gets sent off after thirty seconds against Colville in the season. Yeah, and I don't think that was a was a red card either. So he's been unlucky um, with that one as well, which was uh, fairly. Uh, yeah, it was. It was. It was a, it's a, it was a strong challenge uh, the one against Cove, um, but it was, it didn't, it certainly didn't warrant a red. It was probably a booking at the most, but you know that early on in the game, no, no, I, I would have just booked him for that. But uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's certainly yeah, a marked man now. Yeah, absolutely. That would be the problem. Uh, obviously, I'll wear a different kettle of fish to start, but. You do wonder that there might be a little bit of spotlight on on, on him, not particularly our athletic, but spotlight on Mohamed Diang now. Yeah, it, it, it then comes across as having a reputation of being a, a dirty player, which obviously he isn't. Um, he's just been unlucky with uh, with the red cards or uh, with the red card against Cove, and then this uh, retrospective one. But as I said, it probably was it, it, that one against Celtic is probably more of a red card than, than the one uh, against Cove. Yeah, absolutely. When when you look at uh, everything, take into consideration. Do you think the SFA will have a? Do you think no? push the hammer? Do you think no throw the book at him, or do you think they'll be a little bit more calmer? Uh, I think I think they'll probably give just give him a you know uh, a a one match ban or a two match ban or you know a, a one and a one suspended or something. Like that. I don't think they're going to be overly. Um, uh, aggressive uh, uh, with them, um, they might give them a, a warning for future conduct as well. But you no, know, I don't think it'll be too overly, overly harsh with them. Yeah, Brian Warrior coming here with a great point here. Said the, he had a great game up to that point of that tackle, and he is a player that will get about and will do the dirty work for you. Yeah, he's he's, he's done well uh, at all over this season. The, the games that I've seen him in. The, in Certainly gets about, um, and, and that's the kind of player that you want. Just somebody who's, uh, he's gonna, you know, do as you said, the dirty work and get in the faces of uh, of these players. Certainly, and not shy of a tackle as, as we've as we've seen. Um, he maybe just needs somebody um, just to to to, to reel him in a little bit. Um, I, I know, you know, you know how Barry Ferguson was in, in, in his his time when he was a player. Um, so maybe he's not. I don't know, is that the right guy to try and calm him down? But, you know, just maybe somebody, maybe his teammates or, or somebody just to say, right, like, yeah, carry on what you're doing, but just maybe uh, just ease off the, the gas a little bit when you're going into these challenges. Okay, uh, yeah, Brown Warrior, good question. Did, you, did the other guy, no, did I, okay, he's asking you the question, actually. Did you see the uh, uh, Salmon Elbow and Welsh? Uh, I did because I was on my way back up the road, but. Uh, on On Saturday? Ah yeah, sorry. I uh, no, I didn't. I haven't seen that one. Uh, I have to say, um, it wouldn't have surprised me if a uh, corner salmon though, um, knowing how uh, how his elbows seem to work. Yeah, absolutely. When when you look at this game, uh, Barry Fugs, uh, I know it was in the Daily Echo today. Basically, uh, having a goal, well, not having a goal, people. That's not really special here, but basically saying that. Uh, Look, we wanted to get to Silk's faces, we wanted to have a go. In Alwa, they had a no fear mentality approach about this game. Yeah, I mean, Barry Ferguson would have loved uh, coming up against Silk in that game, um, being, a, being a Rangers man and all. He probably would have had that uh, <coughs> that mentality drilled into his players uh, for that week. You know, that's what we're going to do, get in their face. And, and rightly so, I mean, it's a, it's a cup game. It's a one-off. Uh, you never know what's, what's going to happen, particularly now this year with uh, with no replays. You know, you, you've got that one game that you've got that one opportunity that there's no second chances, if you like. Um, so you need to 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 do whatever you can. Um, I mean, for skill against skill um, and uh, attributes to attribute, all of our players just just aren't going to match up to the Celtic players, and I'm not being 
uh, disrespectful in any way, but you know, there's, there's certainly not another all of our players are going to play play in a Celtic team, so they have to try and get the through the game uh, any by any other means, and that's you know getting in our faces or being aggressive in, in tackles and, and try and do that, and that, that's the way that they're going to try and do it. Um, so be it. And as I said, it's it's one game. That most of them are probably not going to get a game like that again. Um, so why not make the bit uh, the best of it? But there is a there is a right way and a wrong way of, of going about it. Um, and, and I certainly think Barry's um, Barry's reputation and obviously his, his history, uh, he may have just let the the occasion get them slightly, um, and maybe just unleashed his players uh, unnecessarily. Just to clarify, viewers, I, I just remembered I forgot to say this. Colin Byers had a two-two game to commentate on Saturday, and a penalty shootout to go and commentate on Saturday. So first and foremost, number one, Colin Byers was a very tired man on Saturday, and number two, he deserved a beer on Saturday. So I can understand and justify why you didn't see the Sabbath extent uh, on Welsh. But in terms of our, I think they can get a lot of inspiration from this game because weak form hasn't been great from their uh, point of view. No, they, they, they got off to a really, um, really bad start to the, the, the season, um, you know, getting beat up at, uh, at Baltimore. Um, and the writing was on the wall for, for Barry for a long time. You know, he, he'd, uh, he'd had arguments with uh, his own fans after the game. Um, it, things weren't going particularly well uh, for him. But I, I think, you know, all of, our fans, all of our need to be realistic, you know, they were in the championship last season. They got relegated. Um, I think they need to be realistic as to where they are. I know they're coming up against really good teams uh, in League One. You know, like the Falkirk, Cove, Airdrie, uh, Queens Park are, are all fighting for that uh, top spot. Uh, and I, I, maybe Alawa's uh, recruitment maybe hasn't been the best this season. That they've lost a lot of good players. Maybe haven't brought in uh, the same kind of quality. So. I think if they were in and around the playoffs, I think that for them, I think that would be a, a decent season. I think they're sitting about six at the moment. Um, so if they can get a, a couple of good uh, results and get themselves within that uh, playoff place again, I think that would that would uh, put themselves doing as a as, as a good season. Um, but you know, anything else would would, would have been a bonus. I, I think they're I think they're far enough away from the the bottom end to to not worry about a, a relegation place. Yeah, absolutely. The transfer talk now. Uh, what's a what's a speculation right now? But one one deal over the line is Demi Mitchell saying for him announced a minute after we were off air last night. How typical! Yeah, and, and announced in a, a bizarre way as as well. I've I seen the the video of uh, of him uh, almost apologising for uh, his previous tweets when the when he was at. Uh, uh, it was at heart, so um, yeah, it's uh, it's, it's obviously a, a good move for him. It's it's one of those where he needs to almost hit the ground running, I think, to to uh, to get the Hibs fans off his back straight away because obviously he, he'd be seen as you know, he, he's played for hearts, he's, he's uh, had uh, comments about Hibs fans and, and the Hibs team previously, so um, you know, you, you need to for him. He needs to get off to, to a good start and uh, hit the ground running to to uh, appease those Hibs fans. It would have been obviously the first time that you know somebody's played for for both Edinburgh sides, but uh, and it probably won't be the last either. But you know, with uh, this day and age, I think it's uh, it becomes a bit more easier to then pinpoint and say, well, he was kind of he's they playing well because he was at Hearts or on their side that we don't want him because he was at Hearts. Or vice versa. So yeah, I think for him he needs to get off uh, off to a flyer and and, uh, and try and get the, the monkey off his back. I think excuse is the ideal destination for uh, Debbie Mitchell because in the Derby, what a way to what a way to, to change the change the barometer. Yeah, I don't know if he scores a winner on that game, and I think that's it. He's uh, he's uh, everything's uh, forgiven and and forgotten about, but. Uh, yeah, I think it's uh, uh, the ideal game for for uh, for him to play in. Um, obviously, Hearts fans will be uh, hoping he has a bit of a stinker as well. Yeah, absolutely. On on this player, he's probably a Martin Boyle replacement. Not a Martin Boyle like for like player. He's a Martin Boyle replacement. Uh, I th that's obviously how people are going to look at it, uh, and obviously instantly the, the pressure's got to be on him to. To start firing on all cylinders, um, you know, you know uh, Martin's obviously uh, going to pastures new, and 
uh, takes with him uh, a great reputation and a lot of goals. But uh, I think I think we've talked previously uh, this season about the, the lack of goals that Hibs have got this season, and that comes from not just the strikers, but you know it's throughout the team. Um, the midfield need to be chipping in with, uh, with more goals, so maybe under Sean Bowley that might ha- start happening as well. Uh, but yeah, certainly there's going to be a lot of uh, not a lot of pressure for the new signing to, to to get some goals. It's funny actually because I watched a bit of this uh, on Boxing Day. Good, good and I pressed the ball very well. Got into good areas, scored three goals. Chris Carter I thought was fantastic that game. And then you watched them on the telly in first night against Cove, and they're struggling. They're lethargic. There's a lack of uh, tenacity about them. And Cove were resolute, but. Yeah, they needed a Kevin Nisbet goal with seven minutes to go to basically rescue the tie for Yeah, and uh, you look at it and you think it might have been one-way traffic, but you know there were there were occasions where a co maybe could have won it themselves. Um, they had a, a, a few chances, but you know, yeah, he was very lethargic. Um, you know, the ball was going from side to side; it wasn't going uh, forward quickly enough. Um, and even at extra time, you know, some of the uh, uh, the Cove players were almost on their feet, um, you know, because of the, the, they're not used to playing that kind of game. They're not used to chasing the ball, and, and yet he still felt as though Hibs didn't they go up that second or third gear that you would have expected them to, and just really turn on the screw. So it was a bit disappointing. Um, you know, again, credit goes to to Cove for for making it that making it that difficult for them. Uh, but had it gone into penalties, it would have been anybody's guess as to who would have gone through there. But again, like I was saying earlier on, it's a cup tie. You look at you're you're just looking to get through, and that's all there is. It doesn't matter how you get through. But they got through. But I would say as well, if performances like that continue, um, the, the Hibs fans won't obviously stand for it for too long. Yeah. Calvin Ramsey, Dave Cormack is uh, being very vigilant in this front. Uh, he's not giving a lot away, obviously. And uh, Dave Cormack is a man that wants money. And the three point three million offer from Bologna isn't going to materialise because Aberdeen have rejected it. We all want money. That's that's the thing, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think that they were that they're probably going to look at it and. Uh, they'll compare the, uh, the the money that the uh, Rangers got for for Nathan Patterson and say, well, that's probably what we're, what we're looking for somewhere in and around there. If they've rejected three point three, I would I, I would suggest that you know they're probably looking for maybe three and a half, maybe three point seven five, something like that, just to take them above that, um, or or maybe even uh, add-ons. Which is probably what they'll be looking for, you know, appearance uh, uh, add-ons and, and things like that. So uh, I'm not surprised he's turned it down, um, but in the long run, you know, he's still a young player. It's three, it's three and a half, it's three point three million. It's a lot of money. Um, you know, maybe maybe a previous chairman might have uh, taken it. Yeah, definitely. On Rob is a great start to the season, and for him, he still has a bit of development to do. Yeah, there's been the comparisons and the parallels between him and, and Patterson, but for Ramsey, he'll be looking to, to continue developing and then make the right move at the right time. Uh, and for him as well, uh, you know, it's it's really his, almost his first real season, um, you know, I, th- I know he played uh, games last season, but this is the kind of the first season where he's had, uh, you know, a, a decent run in the side um, and he's playing well um, and he's got to look at it uh, he's still really, really young, and if he's got a, a decent head on his uh, on his shoulders, he he would he would maybe look at the staying at Aberdeen for another couple of seasons, develop there, and then maybe move on to you know a bigger, even bigger side. But you know, if you look at what uh, uh, Aaron Hick is doing over there uh, in Italy as well, he might be looking at that and say, actually, you know, maybe that's the route for me. It's all uh, hearsay, of course, because it, it, he's all on the contract. It, it, it's uh, down to the the chairman as to uh, what happens with him. But at some point, I think uh, his his head his head will start to turn and um, can Aberdeen uh, hold on? And probably not. But you know, is it uh, is it about the money uh, or or for him? Is it about the the development and and you know achieving bigger and greater things for his career? Yep, definitely. On to 
Dundee. Uh, Declan Gallagher has been the subject of attention from Dundee Football Club. Possibility of a loan there. Uh, my understanding, I haven't spoken to uh, my, our fellow coach, but Jack Glenn Schroeder, is he still stays in Dundee. So it would be a good move for all parties, this. Yeah, I, I think it's he, he's sort of floated about for the last two or three seasons. He hasn't really settled. Um, he's played for Dundee before. He's been there before and, 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 knows, the, and knows the club. So I think it would be a, a good move for him. Um, it's it, I, I don't think he's obviously the, the player that he, he was uh, that was getting at the, the Scotland team etc. But you know it's a, a load move for him, and you know if he can help them help Dundee survive, uh, that, that's all good for him. But but it's certainly with the players that they've brought in, you know, I said Niall McGinn yesterday, potentially oh. Gallagher as well. They're, they're going down that line of, of just trying to get themselves uh, above the head above water. And try and get as many as much experience in as, as they can to help, which is a a, a fairly a young uh, side at the moment. Yeah, good comment coming in here from RFC fifty six title said two out of three crap two side teams. Well, I'll give you two examples here, Colin. Start the season, Dundee United won, Rangers nil, and last season, Dundee uh, sorry Rangers won, Johnston won, Johnston won the penalties. There you go. So they're not all crap. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> back on uh, Galka, I think you've got a good addition for Dundee because Dundee have been swamping and goals for fun at the back right now. And that's even with their uh, big players, they've had available such as Ryan Sweeney, Lee Ashcroft, and Lee Fontaine. Yeah, the, the reason why they're doing this is because they're leaking goals. Yeah, I know somebody has experience can maybe just uh, help out there. Um, uh, it's, it's a player that they're, that they're sorely needing, and as you said as well, it's maybe a, a good move for him as well, just to kind of re uh, uh, spark his, uh, his career a little bit. I know he's what 30 31 now, um, so he, he's just that kind of uh, kind of point of his career where he, he you know he needs to be playing, he needs to be uh, enjoying his, his, uh, his football as well, and you know, this might just be the, the, the spark for Dundee to, to help them out of the mire that they're in. Yep, absolutely. I mean, they've got a big game at the McDem Park tomorrow. That's it's a six pointer. It's not going to decide relegations. I felt that cause it's never decided in January, but it's a massive six pointer at McDem Park tomorrow night. Yeah, it's 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 uh, it's a game that neither side would, would want to to lose. Uh, particularly St John's, obviously, but the way that things are going for them. Uh, you know, the defeat against the uh, Kelty and Saturday in the Cup as well, but it hasn't helped the, the situation. Uh, Colin Davidson's under a lot, a lot of pressure. Uh, James, uh, James McPick maybe is not under the, the same amount of pressure. Um, but yeah, it's it's a definitely going to be a, a huge game for for both, and uh, one that neither side will will, will uh, want to lose. It's funny because St Johnston could be going from the last year to go up to the Bob Model Stadium next year. Could well be. They could well be, um, and uh, a bit of a calm down. And, and I'm assuming you're you're thinking that uh, Cove's going to win the uh, league one title. Yeah, it's nice to lose. Uh, it, it is. It is. Um, you know the 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 way Falkirk threw it away last season, and there was always that uh, possibility. But uh, they they are going from strength to strength. If to brought in Mark Reynolds just to show up their defensive even a, a little bit uh, more than it already is. Uh, Meganson and, and McAllister uh, up front, uh, Mark Adosh there as well, uh, Jamie Marson, they're all good players. Um, they're all playing really well and yeah, you're, you're probably right, it, it's theirs to lose at the minute. Now, my vote has been excited and you've probably been away to t- better on Tenerife, Ibiza, but that's probably just been it uh, in terms of your holiday destinations. This player from Motherwell, they've signed uh, uh, centre half Victor Nivenald. He's played in England, France, Malaysia, Slovakia, America, Vietnam, and then Scotland. Quite the journey. I, I think that's what you call a journeyman. Yeah, you, you, you definitely, <laughs> definitely somebody who likes uh, uh, likes his passport to, to be uh, uh, stopped doing again. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a it's a strange uh, career path. Absolutely. Uh, six feet four, and he can play centre half, right back, and right midfield. Not that, I don't think we will need too many adjustments in those areas, but it's always good to have Stephen Depp. 
yeah, it's, it sounds like it's obviously going to be one in, one out kind of uh, a thing there, which is what you don't obviously expect. But uh, yeah, six feet four, we'll see how he, how he gets on. You know, Vietnam and uh, Scotland uh, are, are very different uh, places to play, I would, I would suggest. Yep, absolutely. Right, so we're going to play Aberdeen tonight. I'm going to try and get the team news for you, but uh, before, I, before I do, any, any transfer deals in the Championship League one week two? Do, do you think Jim will try and add to squad loan signings, perhaps? Um, well, he's uh, he brought in uh, Rico Kutongo yesterday um, um, after he left Airdrie. Uh, there is word of another one possibly coming in, which I think may well be um, uh, another defender or another midfielder. Uh, but at the moment, it's all pretty quiet on the on the Western Front. But uh, uh, Jim does like to keep his cards close to his chest with these kind of things, and uh, has suggested before that uh, before the end of the summer transfer window, that was that nobody else was coming in, and then brings in three in the in the last day. So uh, he does like to keep his cards close to his chest. But we'll uh, we'll see how it goes um, and uh, within the next few days. Well, you, you'll 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 follow Scott Burns, will you? You'll follow what he does in terms of transfers and that, will you? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. I've always been a big believer that the be- be- best signs are the ones that are kept uh, cards close to the chest, rather than the ones that are fielded out. Right. Because Tony Watt. Right. I'll just give you a prime example of the viewers. He done the advanced talks. Blah blah blah. Done it on, on Christmas Eve. So it goes to show you that these kind of things can be wrong. But then when the when they do go right, then the journalists haven't got their hands in it. It's mm-hmm. the best feel ever. Oh yeah, the, the, there's loads of examples during the years um, of you know the, the, these journalists or these uh, in in the know kind of guys that think they know what's going on and and it's uh, completely uh, completely gone the the, the the wrong other way. I mean, doing in England not so long ago, you know, people were talking about Ronaldo going to Man City. That obviously that obviously didn't happen. Um, and I think the most famous one uh, up in Scotland is obviously Mo Johnson. Um, you know, supposed oh, to be returning and going back to to to, to Celtic, and the, you know they even paraded him and saying he was coming back. And then next thing you know, he was uh, signing for Rangers because they hadn't actually got the the deal signed and uh, done yet. So uh, yeah, you've got. Uh, I think that the, the phrase the phrase nowadays is I'll believe it. Uh, uh, I won't believe it until I see the the scarf above the head kind of thing. And that's. Uh, and these this day and age where you know social media takes a uh, takes a story and adds an arm and a leg and a, a third head and things like that. You've got to wait until the, the deal's done and uh, the the ink's dry on the on the paperwork before you you start to uh, send this player's going here there or he's going to this place or that place. I've always got a good relationship with Tommy Young at Dundee because obviously <laughs> I, I do a lot of Dundee football club stuff and I was uh, I was actually texting Tom. Well, last night said, Tommy, the guys are speaking about Nelm again, but I don't believe it until you've got a fit picture of Tommy Nelm again uh, over his head. And that's exactly what it was. Uh, so, so probably from the, from that persuasion. But uh, team viewers are in for St. Mirren against Aberdeen. Colin, St. Mirren lineup as follows. Just before I started St. Mirren, they have brought back Lewis Jameson on loan, uh, who was on loan in Cali. He was at Clyde last year. I watched him for quite last year, Colin. I thought he was a really good player. Uh, but St. Mirren lines up as falls. Albert and goals. Uh, Fraser, Shogunese, Dunn, Tanzer, Power, Ronan, Henderson, Kilty, McGrath, and Brophy. The subs are Linus, Tate, Erhard, Flynn, Reed, McAllister, Green, Erwin, and Dennis. Now, Jim Goodwin and uh, Jimmy McGrath had clear air talks yesterday, and no surprise effectively that he started tonight. Yeah, and uh, you know the the run that uh, St Mirren are on as well. Um, you know something something had to give, uh, and if, you know if if you, if you have those kind of clearly air talks, you, you you'd expect them then to, to to start the next game. Um, and he has so you know St Mirren really are strong. I think it's one win in the last eleven, something like that. I think the last win was was just last week. Yeah. Um, so you know they they really are struggling at the minute. Uh, they got off to a, a strong start to the season, which has probably helped them. Um, where they're at at the moment, had they not got off to a, a stronger start, they might have been uh, further down the league. But you know they, they are uh, they are struggling a little bit, and I, I can't see anything other than a, than an Everton win at night. Uh, I'm afraid. I think someone proved a few people wrong at Tardis last week. Something that Jim Goodwin kind of acknowledged after the game. Yeah, it, it probably came as a, as a bit of a surprise, but I think what helped them um, 
coming into that game was all the talk was about Tony Watt, and it was about you know everything was about the, uh, Tony Watt, and it was about Dun United, and I think uh, it, that helped St Mirren just to kind of uh, go under the radar a little bit, just quietly get on with their work, and uh, it, the it was like had you know let's say Tony Watt hadn't signed for them at that, at that time. Maybe the spotlight might have been a little bit more on St Mirren and, and, and on the run that they were on, and, and maybe the, the pressure might have been on them a little bit more. But you know, as I said, the pressure—it was all about uh, Tony Watt last week, and uh, it was it wasn't the uh, it, it was obviously how how they they wanted it to, to to go. But uh, you know, they got the they got the win, and uh, just kind of stopped that rot a little bit. On I'll go back. I'll go to, uh, on to our new team in a minute, but I must say, Colin. What a valiant display it was for Mark Steen Saturday. Sixtieth minute, uh sixtieth minute for Ray Rovers to open the score, but and yeah, Ray Rovers had the, the majority of chances and the majority of possession, but Mark Steen didn't work out a uh, play spending stretch for imagination on Saturday. No, and again when people look at the score and say it was three 0 they thought, well, it's probably pretty comfortable when you actually look at it, it was I think you said it was about the sixty sixty fifth minute, something like that, and then the, the other two goals were were, were very late on, uh, probably c- catching uh, Banks on the uh, on the counters uh, as they were t- pressing for a for an equaliser. But again, yeah, it's, it, it it just shows you how uh, how uh, good and all about the the pyramid is uh, and how it's been opened up and how these teams are getting a, a little bit of limelight and they they they're getting games where they just you know otherwise wouldn't be able to uh, come up against teams like uh, uh, Wraith. So it does give them that uh, that little bit of a, a sniff of what it is to play to play these kind of uh, games, and you never know. At some point, um, Banks of D might be in the in, in the league, and you never know just how how things will go. Yeah, on Rafe and a lot Kelty Hearts into this. Kelty have St Mirren as you t- as we touched upon off air, of course, but. Mm-hmm. Celtic are away to St Mirren and three buses for the Celtic sports to that game. And Rafe are obviously playing Celtic, which is likely not to be three o'clock today, Saturday because of TV requirements, of course. But even then, uh, Rafe Rovers supporters are getting subsidised for, for travel to the way east end of Glasgow, which is a fairly good road for both five clubs there. Yeah, I, I think Celtic, you know, they, they will, will recognise this as a, as a huge opportunity. Uh, yes, it's as a, a Premier League uh, or a Premiership side that they're playing, but as I said, it's a side that is really struggling at the moment. Uh, Kelty are, are flying in all cylinders uh, in the league. Um, they've got a huge win against uh, the the holders, St Johnson. The, they've knocked them out. Um, so they will see it as a as a, as a big opportunity to, to to progress again. And the fact that I think that they've already got uh, three three buses going already, uh, providing the travel for them as well, uh, it's, 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 it's only a good it's a good thing for them. Um, and, and the same, Wraith would obviously fancy their chances as well. And again, as I said earlier, it's, it's one off. It's a one off game. And you've got one chance. You know, might as well just make the, the most of it and, and not leave anything uh, le- le- leave anything behind. Okay, back on to tonight. Aberdeen team is as follows: Lewis and Goals, McCrory, Brown, Ramirez, Hedges, Ojo, Ferguson, Jenks, Ramsey, Cabo, and Bates. Subs for Aberdeen are Woods, Gallagher. Well, okay, okay, fair enough. Gallagher is on the bench. Maybe the Dundee reporters. I, I, by the way, I'm broadcasting. <laughs> don't put me in this. Don't put me in this. I'll just say what the Dundee reporters are saying. Anyway, uh, the bench is Woods, Gallagher, Jet, McGee, McLennan, Baron, Kennedy, and Milne. Strong team that from Aberdeen this evening in Paisley. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a tight, it's probably the, the team you would have expected. Um, you know the the run at their own as well. Um, you know that's a team you'd expect, and it's a strong team. Uh, you might as well. You know, it's a chance for them to uh, to to go above uh, to go into fourth. I think it is if they if they win the game, albeit for for twenty four hours, but for a, a psychological point of view, uh, that, that's a it's a good thing for them. You know, it wasn't that long ago since a lot of people were uh, calling for for Glass to go, and I think that. Uh, at three games where he uh, beat Hebs, Hertz, and Drew with Rangers, and that one spell just helped them, uh, helped them ease the the, the worries slightly, and, and they've gone again to uh, just one loss since the uh, beginning of December. So you know they're on a, a bit of a run as well, and uh, 
I think it was Hibs that they, they was their, their only loss. So yeah, they, they'll be yeah. going there full of confidence and uh, the one four one the last time the, the two sides met. So as I said, I kind of see it being anything other than that than an Aberdeen win. Absolutely. They played Edmund Saturday. Similar team. Is there any changes? Uh, only one change. No, right, one change perhaps with with Baron uh, obviously started. But uh, yeah, when, apart from that. That was the team that played Edmund Saturday, and it showed that they gave Edmund all the respect in the world. Yeah, I, I, I think they, they would have looked at it and gone, well, it's it's maybe a chance that we can maybe rotate the squad slightly. Uh, but you know, it's it's been it's nineteen ninety since uh, everybody had won the uh, Scottish Cup, so that's that's uh, what that's like what we're saying about uh, with um, you know, certainly like, uh, Eller on winning the. the the title stop with the ten row. Scottish Cup is, is, is something that the Aberdeen fans are, are, are dying to, to win. And had he uh, had he put out a, a shall we say a weaker side or a, a younger side and, and maybe scrape through, that would have just added to the 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 hysteria and the, the negativity that some people still have for him. But you know he, he's put a strong team out. He's he's been respectful towards uh, uh, Edinburgh has been respectful towards the uh, the cup as well, and he's taken it seriously. And uh, no doubt, we'll, we'll uh, want to try and uh, be the the first man to win it since 1990. Well, when, when you look at it, I've only played a week inside against Rafe Rovers in the Premier Sports Cup, and that was a big mark, mark for that for Stephen Glass. Yeah, he's been maybe uh, he's maybe looked at it and think, well, you know, once betting twice shy kind of thing. He's certainly not going to uh, make that mistake again. Um, but it, it, uh, in a funny way as well, it also means that f- for guys in the fringes, if they if they are in the fringes and and they're not in the team, they're obviously not going to get a, a a cup game or, or or things like that. So if they do get themselves into the uh, into the starting lineup uh, and they're playing well, they know that also. That they're then not going to get dropped either, uh, so there's no rotation, if you like, uh, for these kind of games. He will take every game as, as serious as the, as the last. And I know if it's Edinburgh, or if it's St Mirren, or if it's Rangers, or Celtic, whoever it is, he's playing. He will he'll put his uh, uh, strongest team as he, he possibly can. Yeah, just to clarify, Conor Barron came on at half time on Saturday, but what a second half he had on Saturday, Colin. Yeah, he's he's uh, got a lot of products um, at the beginning of the season, uh, uh, being out on loan, and, and I think, excuse me, with the the fact that they've taken so many of these young players back from their loans, uh, would suggest that they're going to go down that uh, that route of you know moving on, maybe some of their experienced players, i.e., like uh, Neil Begin is obviously gone, and trying to blood these guys, um, it, it give them as much game time as they can. Uh, in an environment where uh, they're going to get the the the, the, the best um, the best coaching, uh, so yeah, I think um, a lot of these guys uh, will get a lot of game time, and, and it's whether or not it uh, it proves uh, proves worthwhile for, for for these guys having been on loan and then coming back and, and playing because you don't want to having been out on loan and expected to be out for a, for a season and then come back and then not play for your parent club. You, you want to be playing games and, and these guys all want to play games as much as, as possible, especially at that Stephen age. Glass, oh, you fit, uh, Stephen Glass admitted uh, prior to tonight's game that Ryan Hedges has been affected by the transfer talk, but Ryan Hedges aside, he's been having some good performances of late, uh, even despite the transfer talk. <coughs> Yeah, he's uh, he's he's obviously just putting the the talk uh, to one side. He's, uh, he's he's a key player for, or has become a key player for for Aberdeen in the last kind of couple of seasons. He's obviously it doesn't seem to be any signs of him signing a new contract. Uh, there's always obviously the, the talk of Blackburn being the, the side that's going to try and tempt him away from the Pottery, but nothing really concrete see, ever seems to come in. And as as you were saying, earlier on, you, you sort of wait until. Something concrete has has happened before you you start commenting on it. Nothing seems to be happening, um, w- but we'll wait and see. As I said, there's a week to go. You never know. Uh, the last thing uh, everybody would want to do is is lose him for uh, for nothing in, in the summer. Absolutely, right, Call. We've had a, such a great show. And we've still got six minutes left, so we're going to go up to the mon- we're going to go up to money tonight because I don't think we've actually mentioned Elgin City since we started the State of Scottish Football Show. Maybe. Once or twice, but that was been pretty brief. But 
Yeah, I'm going to play Kelty tonight. Big game for both clubs. This Kelty in a massive high after Saturday. Elgin looking to go and kickstart their season to an extent as well. Yeah, I've, I've been waiting for for Kelty yeah, for Elgin, I should say, to, to kickstart their uh, their season. Um, all season that they've been really uh, poor in terms of uh, where they've been for the last couple of seasons. Um, they were really unlucky not to to get into the uh, the the playoffs uh, or, or go through in the playoffs. I should say last season. Um, it was you know you could separate the. The top four um, by a, a, a fog paper. It was that uh, that close uh, that uh, last season. Yeah, Elgin will be really disappointed. Um, but I, I, again, you look at how the way Kelty's playing at the moment. Uh, they'll be on the high after uh, after Saturday. Uh, they'll be looking to to try and try and uh, um, finish this league off as, as quickly as, as as they can. Uh, I know we're only uh, in the January, but still. Two or three months to go, but they will look to try and, uh, and win as uh, as many games as they can and try and finish this league off as quickly as they can. But you know, for Elgin, yeah, they they, they really need to they need to kickstart the season as, as sooner rather than later, or, or a, a playoff place might be uh, uh, might be way off in the distance and it'd be too too they'll be too far back to to catch up. Well, we'll stick to Elgin from now. Elgin, uh, Gareth Price has done a wonderful job at Borough Briggs. There was a wee bit of a suggestion that his expiry date was running out at that club, but what he's done at Elgin is nothing short of uh, remarkable. Yeah, I think you've got to kind of look at uh, Elgin in, in terms of uh, much in the same way as you should look, look at Peter Hayden and is trying to attract players up to these corners of the the, the world where. If you're part, if you're a part-time player, you know, traveling up and down there uh, two or three times a week is 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 a bit of a uh, bit of a struggle. So, uh, you know, for to, to for Elgin to even keep somebody like uh, Kane Hester, who's you know banging in goals for fun, um, it is is a is a phenomenal uh, achievement. But you know, they've they've been there, they've been in the league now for for 20, 22 years now, um, and they've never gotten out of. Uh, League One or Division Three, as it as it was. So, um, you know, a lot of a lot of Elgin fans would like to see them getting promoted. How can they take that next step? That's the thing. Who can give them that next step? Um, Gavin Price, as you said, has done a has, has done a great job. Uh, and obviously, changed his uh, or has had to change his assistant uh, as well uh, uh, at the beginning of this season. So, you know, it's all these kind of things are. They're very difficult for these clubs, but uh, you know he's done a great job, and I know I'm sure at some point uh, we'll see Elgin uh, out of uh, League One and in League One. They would be the, they would be one of the only clubs in SPFL that's got a female director. Am I right? Uh, I off the top of my head, I think that you could be right. Um, I don't know if Rovers have got one, but. Uh, probably, there probably there, well, there, there may well be a, a few uh, up and down the, the, the country. Yeah, uh, the female director, of course, is Isla Benzie, who does a terrific job at the Elgin City Football Club. The Elgin team, just to uh, uh, how this game will pan out, but <laughs> Tom McHale starts to go for Elgin, Ewan Spark, Ivan Tower, Donald Cardi, Ross Draper, Ronnie McHugh, Russell Dingwall, Robin Omar, Kane Hester, Angus Mayor, and Tony Dingwall. The bench is Alden. El Zab- Zabudi, Kevin Hirati, Josh Peters, Finn Allen, Matthias Mercado, Daniel Hoban. On to Kelly. Kevin Thompson was interviewed for the Kelly job before Depp McKinnis scored. I think it just shows the strength and depth and uh, how he's went from strength to strength as a manager, Kevin Thompson. Yeah, I, 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 that, that's why I found it strange that Barry Ferguson would, would have left Kelly to, to then take on the, the Alwa job we know. Having gotten promoted, it's a chance for him to, to take a team that's uh, that's looking to get promoted. He could s- submit his name uh, in Celtic's history, but instead he went uh, he went to Alwa, and now obviously uh, Thompson's doing a, a, a fantastic job there, and I'm sure that they he will finish the season as champions. Yeah, absolutely. The, the, the last time they were up to Elgin, they were obviously frustrated with how things panned out with the snow and the, the weather. So I think they'll be what I think they'll be. A bit of desire from Kelly, not in a bad way, but a good way. Just get three points to back up the road, and then obviously they'll go home at two in the morning. No, there's three points in the bag. Yeah, it's a case of let's get up there, let's get the job done, and let's get home again as quickly as possible. But yeah, they'll uh, 
they'll, they'll obviously, <laughs> as I said, they'll still be on the high for um, for Saturday, and uh, they'll, they'll be looking to get the the, the job done uh, as 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 quickly as as, as they can. But uh, there is uh, one game in League One as well played against uh, Airdrie, which is. Uh, significant for us as well, you know. If uh, Erdogan can do us a favour and keep Clyde at bay, so be it. So I, I actually forgot about that game of League One. Thank you very much. So, <laughs> uh, I'll try, I'll try to keep that a bit under the radar for Peter Head's persuasion. But nope, that's all we've got time for this evening. Thank you very much to everybody uh, for tuning in. That is a big game indeed between Clyde and Peter Head. Um, Clyde and Erdogan, beg your pardon. Uh, but it's time for Coronation Street and Emily, unfortunately. So thank you very much to everybody for tuning in. And we'll be back tomorrow with a preview of the Wednesday night cinch premiership fixtures. But for now, thank you very much.